This video is intended to supplement detailed written documentation that provides instructions for setting up and using Histomics ML2. Docker containers for Histomics ML2 are hosted on Docker Hub, including a quick start container that comes preloaded with data and that is used in the examples shown in this video. To read more about Histomics ML, check our paper on Archive. And if you're interested in installing Histomics ML2 from source or in contributing to the project, you can find us on GitHub. Histomics ML2 is accessed through your web browser. If running the Quick Start container on your local system, Histomics ML2 is located at the local host address. The top of the landing page provides access to menus for training, visualization, and for importing and exporting datasets. On the landing page, there are options for starting a new session or for continuing a previously established session. To start a new session, enter the classifier name, select the training data set to use, and enter names for the positive and negative classes. In these examples, we will be classifying tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, or TILs, and so we will label the positive class TIL and the negative class as non-TIL, representing all other classes. After entering this information, click Begin to start the session. The first task in active learning is to provide training examples to initialize the classifier. We call this process priming. On this page, we have a whole slide image viewer where you can select slides and explore their contents. Use the mouse wheel to adjust the magnification and click the mouse button and drag to pan the slide. Here we're looking at a breast cancer slide containing a large number of lymphocytes that appear as small dark mononuclear cells. These will be our tumor infiltrating lymphocytes that we're trying to develop a classifier for. The super pixel segmentation can be displayed by clicking show segmentation. Click Select Super Pixels to label samples for training. The screen will prompt you first to select positive examples and will display and keep a running count of your selections. As you select examples, thumbnail images of your selections will appear under the banner. After four positive training examples are selected, you will be prompted to select four negative training examples. When selecting negative examples, Pick a variety of possible patterns, since this class includes both tumor and stroma. If you mistakenly select an example, you can simply unselect it by double-clicking the thumbnail image in, under the banner. When you're finished selecting, click Stop Selecting, and then click Prime to train the classifier and generate a starting point for active learning. For training, we have found that people like to interact with heat maps during labeling to identify areas that need correction or that are enriched with samples having high prediction uncertainty for active learning. Stomach's ML provides two kinds of heat maps, one depicting prediction uncertainty and the other depicting the precedence of samples predicted as the positive class. Zooming into this hotspot, we can see that a group of superpixels containing tumor has been misclassified as TIL where a group of TIL superpixels has been misclassified as non-TIL. The paint tool can be used to drag the mouse over these misclassifications, labeling them and adding them to the training set. As you drag the paint tool, you'll see that the colors change, indicating a change of labeled class. After labeling, we, we click Retrain to update the classifier and can see the improvement in prediction accuracy.
We suggest frequently retraining the classifier after adding small numbers of samples for faster training. This will help the classifier converge more quickly and will minimize your labeling effort. Now we've done a couple training iterations to update the classifier using the uncertainty heat maps. Let's switch to the positive class density heat maps and look at the slide at medium resolution to see how the classifier is performing. So we'll just kind of scan through the slide at medium magnification and look at the hot spots and see how well the predictions correspond to the tills. And it looks pretty good. You can see that most of the superpixels predicted as TIL contain at least a single mononuclear cell. You can still use the paint tool to make corrections in this view. As you paint superpixels, the count is tracked above, and there's a delete button to remove any samples that you've selected if you select something by mistake. So for example, as you zoom out, you might forget to deselect the paint tool. And as you try to pan, you accidentally select a super pixel. And you can delete that. So let's switch back to the uncertainty heat map and now take a look at the prediction uncertainty. You can see that there are very few hot spots with intense uncertainty. And that suggests that the classifier is doing a good job of explaining the patterns contained on this slide. The quick start container contains a single slide, but most data sets will contain many slides. To help with labeling, we provide a heat map gallery accessible using the banner link. This gallery organizes the heat maps for each slide in your data set using prediction uncertainty statistics to help prioritize slides that need additional labeling. Clicking on a slide in this menu will load that slide in the heat map labeling view for exploration. In addition to the heat map labeling view, we provide a traditional active learning view where individual samples are presented to the reviewer for labeling. This menu can be displayed by clicking instance on the banner. The instance menu displays a collection of eight super pixels with their predicted class at the top of the screen. Clicking on any one of these thumbnails will navigate the viewer to highlight this sample so you can see the surrounding context of the tissue. If the prediction is incorrect, you can switch the label by double-clicking the example. After reviewing the presented samples, you can click Update to retrain the classifier. After the retraining is finished, the classifier will examine the data set and select another eight samples to present to the reviewer. The review tool allows you to examine and make corrections to the labeled samples contained in your training data set. Statistics describing the training data set and labeled samples are provided at the top of the screen. A scrollable thumbnail gallery of labeled samples are shown, organized by class and by slide. Clicking any of these thumbnails will navigate the slide viewer to show the surrounding tissue context. The super pixel boundary is shown on the inside, and the thumbnail that's captured and used for machine learning is shown as the outer boundary. The sample thumbnails can be dragged between the two columns to change their assigned label if labeling errors are detected. The review tool allows more experienced reviewers like pathologists to quickly review and approve the labels made by trainees and give their blessing to data sets. 
To commit your training dataset to the Histomics ML database, return to the heat map menu and click Save. To end the session and return to the landing page, click Finalize. Once your classifier is committed to the database, at any point in the future you can continue your training session. Just select the training dataset from the pull down menu and select your classifier name. And Histomics ML will display some statistics about the training dataset and the number of labeled examples. Clicking through to continue, let's go and examine from the review screen and just confirm that our training samples are still available. So you can see we have the same samples as we left off with. And from here, we can resume using the instance menu or the heat map viewer to add to our training data set.